We are working through five steps that we can do right now in order to begin preparing the way for miracles to happen. You know, when we understand that so many people feel uncomfortable sharing their faith and all of that, and I talked about in the very first video I did in this group, how in general people are just uncomfortable going outside of their or normal routine of the people that they talk to and interact with each and every day. So to step out of that and enlarge our tent stakes, if you will, and stretch out our, uh, our tents and make our place large, enlarge our coasts, <laughs> you know what verse I'm trying to think of. Anyway, in order for us to do that, we have to do things differently because nothing will change as long as we stay where it's comfortable. When we start doing things that are uncomfortable, that's where we begin to experience personal change and growth. And from that, we begin to see different kind of results. So we've been talking from the premise of Proverbs 11:30, which says, he who wins souls is wise. Obviously, uh, that's going to take some wisdom in order to win people over, right? So we are learning how to do things differently just to come out of our own personal habit patterns of things. And there's so many that have a public platform where they are teachers, whether it's in the public school system or in the church environment or in small groups or at workplace, you're an instructor, an equipper. Oh, we feel great in that area where we have now gained a comfortableness about it. But to come out from that public place where we normally speak and share and teach and so on and so forth, to now broaden out our tent stakes and enlarge our coast, it's going to take us some work too to come out of our comfort zone. Now, I've worked with pastors and leaders and bishops and apostles and prophets and all kinds of people in 20 countries in the last 38 years. And I have to say that when you take them out of their comfort zone where they are in charge, so to speak, and you put them in just a regular environment where they're not the key person, their uncomfortableness to talk about things and to come outside of their normal routine of things is the same as everybody else. Woohoo! <laughs> Take comfort in that. We're all putting our pants on in the same way, one leg at a time, right? Now, when we were kids growing up, and you were probably told this too as a child, don't talk to strangers. And that's really wise counsel. That's what our children should know. They don't talk to strangers because there's, it's just very dangerous for them. But I have great good news for you today. Woohoo, you're all grown up, yay. So now as a grown up person, you have discernment hopefully of the type of people that are not good for you to talk to because they're the wrong element, if you will, hardcore thugs and criminals and people of that nature, unless you're in a situation like, which I like to do, uh, prison ministry and rehab ministry and things like that, where I've done a lot of that and street stuff and all that, I can be comfortable there now as well and have had that kind of an ongoing ministry throughout my whole uh, ministry lifetime of about 40 something years now. But those are acquired skills and abilities over time and it all starts with these basic things that I'm sharing with you that probably sound so ABC or one, two, three that it's like it's too simple to even bother with. But I'm telling you if you'll bother with them, it's gonna start changing you because you're gonna reach outside of your normal comfortable way of doing things in and through life and you're gonna broaden your horizons and be able to develop a greater skill set and feeling comfortable no matter where you are, anytime, any place, anywhere. I've been with really high up people, I've been with really low down people and with everybody in between, and I can feel comfortable in any setting because I have acquired the skills working purposefully on them, asking the Lord's help and pushing myself and so that's what I'm sharing with you to do in this Let's Talk group. It's really simple, but it's really hard for us to come outside of our normal routine. You know, the mother bird, she pulls feathers out of the nest after a while, or the father bird, whichever one, they, the parents start 
putting those feathers outside the nest so that the nest starts getting really prickly. And when that happens, then all of a sudden it's too uncomfortable to stay in the nest. And so the little birds figure out they've got to fly. And so that's what kind of happens with us. We need to get uncomfortable enough so that we'll do whatever work it takes to come up to the next level to become comfortable there. And then, guess what? The process works all over again, as they say now so often, rinse and repeat. You have to do the same thing to keep stretching and keep growing. Because the minute you stop stretching and growing and learning, that's the point where you begin to digress. You begin to withdraw or draw back. And there's one scripture where the Lord says, you know, I have no pleasure in those that draw back. We should continue going forward from faith to faith and strength to strength and glory to glory and getting better and better, or as I like to say, gooder and gooder. <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of those little Judaism words that I like to use. But we've been talking about five things we could start doing now, and the first one we did a couple weeks ago now was to be gutsy and to take personal responsibility to start talking to people we don't know really very well yet and just beginning to have the general opening of a of a back and forth dialogue like oh that's really nice what you're wearing or wow aren't we having great weather today or Woo, you know it's hot today whatever just talking to people outside of our normal routine of talking to people putting our antenna up and being aware of other people around us and not being just so encased in our own world and what's happening with us personally. That's huge. Uh, that is so huge, It's I could probably write a whole chapter about that. But anyway, we'll move right along. And I gave you three things you could do along that line of being gutsy, find out those points. Then we had another one where we talked about point number two, and that was to initiate and engage and that was to develop the art of comfortableness, creating an atmosphere of comfortableness so that this period of awkwardness would be passed and it would be an enjoyable conversation between that person that we were talking to. Now we're not yet even engaging in spiritual matters or in things that people find difficult to talk about. Right now we are preparing the way for miracles by getting us out of our own way. <laughs> and becoming more comfortable in settings that we're not normally used to engaging in conversations more or less. And so these are exercises that's developing us with skills that's going to help us. And even just talking about things in front of the mirror is so important. Remember that was from step number one and some of you struggling with that one still, but keep working on that until you get comfortable with that. Listening to your own self talk and then thinking about how could I say that again, but in a different way so that we begin to think on our feet and develop different ways. You know what's happening is your brain cells are connecting in new ways and making different neurological paths and connections with different parts of your brain. And it's so healthy for you to exercise your brain. And another outcome that I love about talking things out is revelation comes. The Holy Spirit brings things up that you didn't even realize yourself until you started talking. That's why a lot of the people that I disciple, we do what I call walk and talks. And we walk and we talk and I ask questions and I get them to share things and articulate things and then share it differently and so on and so forth. And it helps create an environment of stretching us outside of our normal comfort zone. So number two was initiate and engage. So we had be gutsy and then initiate and engage. And number three, practice makes perfect. Now it's so interesting that when it says that it takes wisdom to win people over. There's a process of development there. When I had my morning devotions today and I was just looking at the footnotes in Proverbs here uh, before they started the book and it was just so interesting what they said right here and I went, whoa, that goes along with what I'm sharing today on the Let's Talk Facebook group. And it said, knowledge is good, but there's a vast difference that stands between knowledge, which is just having the facts, and wisdom, which is applying those facts to life. 
Now we may really amass a lot of knowledge, but without wisdom, our knowledge is useless. Mmm, that was so good. We must learn how to live out what we know. And so practice, practice, practice makes perfect. I know one of my friends, her daughter now is going to a nursing class and so she learned how to do blood pressures. So guess what she did at the family get together that evening? She took everybody's blood pressure. She's practicing, right? With family, with her inner circle, if you will, so she can become good and skilled. So when she's in class and then moving beyond into jobs, she has that comfortability factor already handled because she's practiced. And so likewise, these things that we do, starting with your closest warm market and then moving out into broader circles of relationships that you have, practicing these skills on purpose, taking things to the next level, helps you become more comfortable in your own skin and more comfortable no matter what setting you're in to be able to not have all those awkward pauses where things just kind of die out but instead you're able to keep the conversation going or facilitate the conversation and that is a huge skill to develop so before we actually can begin to learn let's say practical tools we want to develop some of these habit patterns so that we can actually then utilize those tools that we will learn to be more effective so practice makes perfect and the point under this number three that I want to share about practice makes perfect is to now pay attention on purpose and listen for cues that you will get when you are listening to other people talk so that you can then draw them into further conversation beyond the normal chit chat but as you're listening to people just talk about things listen for them dropping little clues as to places where you could open the door to enlarge that conversation on that topic. So it's really, in a sense, developing a greater skill of listening. So you're looking for cues so that you can go beyond chit chat, which is kind of like, oh, how's the weather today or something like that. And we want to get them to talking about themselves because people love to talk about themselves and so we want to engage them in that. So when you hear a little cue from their conversation about maybe something that they're going through or something that's great that happened to them or whatever it is, and you're picking up on a dynamic that they are sharing and you see underneath the surface, then bring that out and kind of say, what happened right there when you were just talking about that? Because I noticed the expression on your face changed or your body language changed or I could just see that there's more to this story than what you were sharing with me. So what what's the real deal? What really happened? And kind of dig in a little bit more and let them just enlarge on what they were saying and sharing so that you are creating that atmosphere of comfortableness in conversations that can carry forward so that we can begin to bring them into spiritual matters later on down the road. So we're just getting you more comfortable so that they'll be more comfortable so that you're developing the art and the skill of conversation and of listening coming out of your own natural comfort zones so that you can feel more uh, in tune with what the Holy Spirit would like to now do in and through you for that individual. So that's really, really important. You could ask them questions like, what did you feel like when that happened? Or what was the thoughts going through your head when they said such and so? And just draw out the conversation a little bit more. So this is number three, practice makes perfect. Engaging in those conversations beyond the chit chat now, listening on purpose, and um, developing that art of listening for the cues that they are saying as they are speaking as to what and ways that you could draw that out. While that's happening, pay attention to the Holy Spirit in you because he can also see behind the veneer and he could bring up a word to you that could share an insight because maybe they're talking with all a bright face and everything 
but maybe there's an inner sadness over something that happened in the Holy Spirit. If you didn't pick up on it, he will. And he could say, there's a sadness under there. And then you could say, you know, it's really exciting what happened to you, but it just seems like you're kind of like feeling a little bit sad today too. I mean, what's going on? Is everything all right? Tell me about it. What happened? And when you give them room like that, then people can talk and really become vulnerable and build up a trust with you and then we can begin to move things farther. Because in order to engage people in spiritual matters, you've got to have the conversation moving so that you can then take that skillfully into spiritual things. You know, I think of Jesus with the woman at the well. We talk about the art of skillful conversation, how he began to start with something very simple chit chat, like need a drink of water, and then just begin to draw her out and draw her out and then talk about the underlying cues. Well, you've had many husbands. So he was opening her up to trust him and then she said, well, yes. And then from there, the conversation began. And look what happened. Not only did she accept his message, but she brought the whole town out to hear and said, listen to this man. So it's real important that we develop our skills. I think even of Nicodemus, when he went to Jesus at night, before he arrived that night, that process working with Nicodemus had started earlier on when Jesus was talking and sharing in different places and Nicodemus was present or overheard conversations that he had had through others and whatever was the case he was drawn to it drawn to it drawn to it until finally he had to find Jesus for himself and so we want to draw people in I call it kind of the Hansel and Gretel approach we drop breadcrumbs along the way but first we need to get better and more skillful in our own conversational skills and listening skills so that we are paying attention to the Holy Spirit speaking within us and also watching for cues from them at the same time. Whew, what an adventure to partner with Jesus. So exciting. So now this was number three of five things we can do right now. Put into practice these steps that we've been talking about. Today's step number three was practice makes perfect. So first we were gutsy, then we initiated and engaged beyond the chit chat, and then now we're practice makes perfect, we're listening for their cues, and we're opening them up more by asking questions that will draw them out. So all these things are skills that we're learning how to do so we can be more effective as fishers and men and disciple makers.